Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And today, I want to talk about the new weak spot or tenderizer mechanic. The Clutch Claw is, of course, one of the new gameplay mechanics in Iceborne. And as well as letting you grapple onto the monster pretty much any time you please, unless of course it's enraged, it also allows you to perform a special grapple attack, which can then result in a weak spot being placed on a monster, typically denoted by visible grey scarring. And then for a period of time thereafter, attacking that weakened area allows you to deal more damage. That much we know, there's nothing new there. It is a really interesting new addition, however, and since this is a mechanic that is available to all weapons, it got me thinking. Are all weak spots equal? Are there any differences or advantages to using certain weapons? And overall, what value does this actually provide? So that's what I set out to find out during the beta. So let's talk about it. Of course, if you do enjoy this video, then a like will be super appreciated. If you have any findings of your own that I perhaps didn't cover in here, by all means, share them down below. And be sure to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future Monster Hunter content. Now, let's begin by talking about the weak point mechanic from a top level. The weapons are grouped into two main categories, light and heavy. This isn't a category that's really indicative of their actual behavior, it refers more to the effect they actually have on the monster. Heavy weapons will create a weak spot the very first time you perform a grapple attack, meaning all you need to do is clutch draw onto the monster, press triangle to attack, and then bam, there is your free weak spot. The weapons within this category are the greatsword, hammer, hunting horn, lance, switch axe, charge blade, and heavy bowgun. Meanwhile, the quote-unquote light weapons, these upon first grapple will see slinger ammo dropped from a monster, which by the way can also be picked up by your teammates. However, if you then grapple onto that same location a second time and perform a second attack, that too will create a weak spot as well. So the light weapons aren't exclusively tied to just dropping slinger ammo, they too can create weak spots, albeit a little bit slower. The weapons within this category are the sword and shield, dual blades, long sword, gun lance, insect glaive, bow and light bowgun. So interestingly, while it might take some weapons longer to apply said weak spot, it is still a mechanic that they can all benefit from. It is however worth noting that the weak spots from lighter weapons appear to not remain on the monster quite as long. I unfortunately didn't get exact timings for this, but that appears to be the other main differentiating factor. But the question then remains, are all weak spots the same? Well, for that, I set out to test this in a repeatable environment. As is often the way, our poor old friend Great Jagras became the focus of our tests. What I then did was took a weapon that would be our constant in this situation, that was the Greatsword, and I picked an attack that we'd repeat, which was the draw attack. Quick, simple, no charging or human error, just a simple draw attack to the head. Now, using beta numbers, the default attack was 102 to the face. I used the same armor set the entire time, so there was no discrepancy on skills or any other damage modifiers. This was the regular attack number for a draw attack to poor great old Jagress's face. With the baseline established, we then systematically went through and applied weak spots to his face using each and every one of the 14 weapons. And what we discovered was that, by default, the clutch floor weak spot appears to provide a flat, almost 10% damage boost. It's technically speaking 9%, but you get the idea. This saw the greatsword attack go from 102 to 111. You know it's a weak spot attack since the damage numbers have these little arrows around them to indicate that you're hitting a weak spot. Now do keep in mind, weapons in Monster Hunter do have different motion values for different attacks, and there are select situations, for example the greatsword, where say landing the first hit of your true charge slash on a weak spot will see the second hit powered up significantly. But to go through and test every single individual move for every weapon in every permutation, that would have been impossible, or at least very, very time consuming. So there may be some outliers here, but from a base level, our test revealed that every single weapon does indeed apply the very same weak spot. No weapon has a better or stronger weak spot than another. A weak spot applied by a great sword provides the same 9% boost to your attacks that a sword and shield weak spot would also do. Admittedly, the sword and shield one may not last quite as long, but principally they are the same. So in summary, Yes, all weapons can apply weak spots, some just take longer, but once applied, they appear to all provide the exact same benefits. Again, as mentioned, if there are select cases for select moves where this doesn't quite apply, by all means, let me know down below. But from the testing we did, it seemed to reveal the aforementioned results. One final thing worth mentioning, sadly, I didn't get to test this myself, but shout out to Fitzcarroll on Reddit for the observation. It seems you can also apply weak spots by performing the claw attack on a monster. Doing so four times seems to apply a weak spot by default, and for light weapons, doing it three times and then following with the weapon specific attack will also allow you to apply your weak spot on the very first hit. It'll be interesting to see come launch if there's any way through say skills or the like to get more out of those weak spots, but either way, it is still a pretty cool mechanic. But for the time being, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and as always, be sure to keep it locked for plenty more.
I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.